On February 21st, Microsoft released Visual Studio 2022 version 17.5. In this video, I will show you the most helpful new features coming with this version of Visual Studio. Hi, I'm a software engineer with over 10 years of experience with the .NET platform. On this channel, you'll learn all about .NET development. There have been at least 15 major new features according to the What's New screen when opening Visual Studio after the update. Let's go through them one by one. The first new feature, the all-in-one search, is probably the new feature that will be used the most. It allows us to search for everything we need in our solution, but also for all the settings and menus within Visual Studio. The all-in-one search can be accessed using Ctrl plus Q to search for Visual Studio features. Let's for example open the Test Explorer. I press Ctrl plus Q, enter Test Explorer and select the matching item from the list using the Enter button on my keyboard. I'm used to doing a lot of navigation work using the mouse, which is definitely slower than using the keyboard. I'm currently adapting to using this Visual Studio feature to navigate around more often. With Ctrl plus T, we end up in the same dialog but on a different tab. If I enter login, I immediately see the different matching code elements. What I really like is that when using the arrow keys on my keyboard to navigate through the list, we see a preview of the code on the right side. If we want to open the selected code element, we use enter to open the file and jump to the location where the code can be edited. When I first started Visual Studio after the update, I had to enable the all-in-one search. If it's not available for you right away, turn it on in the settings. Next, we have a performance improvement when building solutions. I tested it with my own product and it definitely speeds up the build process by only building projects that have changed. I believe Visual Studio previously already did some optimization. At least a complete rebuild always took longer than a regular build. However, I could definitely see an improvement when updating from 17.4 to 17.5. I'm curious about your experience, especially if you work with pretty large solutions. Please let me know in the comments if this performance improvement is noticeable to you. Visual Studio now contains the option to publish and deploy containers to Azure without needing a Docker file or additional tools. I'm currently not using Docker, so I'm the wrong person to judge this feature. However, from the people I talked with, it seems like the most people prefer using a generic Docker file over an integrated tooling solution. Despite that, it seems to be worth mentioning that it now is a new feature in Visual Studio. We can now use ASP.NET Core dev tunnels for remote debugging. Dev tunnels are a technology that allows us to connect to remote machines that we usually could not directly reach for debugging. I haven't used it myself, but I have heard great things about it. For example, you can use it to connect and debug power apps. If you have experience with this feature, please let us know in the comments. We already had the inline diff view for C Sharp suggestions in IntelliCode before this update. However, while it sometimes is really helpful to refactor small pieces of code by repeatedly pressing the tab key, the suggestions can also be overwhelming and confusing. With Visual Studio 2022 17.5, we get an option to turn off this feature in the Visual Studio settings. If you prefer a more streamlined and cleaned up experience as we had in the past, you now have the option to turn this feature off. For everyone else that keeps using this feature, Microsoft arguably improved the model that creates the suggestions. From using it for a few days, I could not tell what exactly changed, but I think the future already was capable of many suggestions before. I have never worked with the Unreal Engine and haven't developed any game so far. Actually, I guess it would be fun to try it at some time in the future. However, for the game developers of you, the Blueprint support might be interesting, check it out. Editing markdown files is something I regularly do. 
I am currently using Visual Studio Code to edit my markdown files. The integrated preview is very helpful for seeing the result before committing the changes to the repository. With this update, we can now do the same in Visual Studio. I tried it and the experience was as expected. You can toggle the preview on and off using the mouse and the keyboard shortcut. I won't open Visual Studio to edit markdown files in the future, but if it's already open, I do not have to start Visual Studio Code, which is a plus for me. One of the most discussed new features is the new Quick Add New Files dialog. When you use the Add New Item menu, we end up in the new compact Add New Item dialog. Before you completely lose your mind, yes, we can change to the old dialog using the Show All Templates button. And yes, Visual Studio saves your preference and remembers the state you leave the dialog for the next time you open it. The new Quick Add New Files dialog allows us to create files more quickly. Let's for example create a user control for XAML based application. We name it login.xaml and press the add button. Some extensions have default templates. For example, when creating an XML file, we get the header definition when the file is created. And for C -sharp files, we get a namespace definition and a class named the same as the file we created. One of the best features is that we can also create files within folders, separating the folder name and the file name using a slash. I still have to get used to the new dialog. It's been years of me using the old dialog and while I see the potential to speed up my process, I'm not there yet. Let me know in the comments about your opinion of this new dialog. Does it have a big impact on how you work with Visual Studio? There are some enhancements to the text visualizer when debugging applications. I'm not really sure how that impacts my everyday development work, but for string-centric solutions, it might indeed be very helpful. I have to admit I don't know what serial monitors are and I have never asked for them. However, this feature is targeted at developers targeting Linux and doing embedded development. Both are topics I have never touched before. Again, let me know in the comments if that is something that changes a lot for you. Again, I do not know what a macro expansion or even a macro is. I see C++ code on the screen, so I assume this feature is exclusively helpful to C++ developers. Being able to filter code coverage items is definitely going to be helpful. Whenever I use this view, I am constantly searching for the information I need. I haven't tested this feature yet, but I'm sure it's a small situational improvement that is helpful when needed. I haven't developed WPF or any other desktop UI technology for years. I'm not sure if the accessibility checker is completely new or what exactly was updated with this Visual Studio update. Microsoft wants to know what you think about this new experience and I do too. If you have some feedback, share it with Microsoft or in this comment section. Last but not least, I want to mention that we as a community have a huge impact on what features are developed and how Visual Studio is improved. When we look at developer community suggestions that are fixed with this update, we see that the native markdown support was a community driven feature. If you have any feedback or want to see a new feature added to Visual Studio that you maybe use in another IDE or that you would really love seeing in the product, providing it to the Visual Studio team using the feedback system is the first step in making it happen. My personal favorites of this Visual Studio update are the all-in-one search, the markdown editing support and the compact version of the Add New Files dialog. What is your favorite feature of this update? Let me know in the comments and see you in the next video.